everyone. Today, we will have a new lesson about parts and functions of the motherboard. What is a motherboard? The computer motherboard is shortly mobile, is one of the most important part of the personal computer. It is a hardware of the computer installed inside the system unit. This mobile hardware acts as the main board or the central or core assembly of the computer system unit. In other words, inside of the CPU case, there are a lot of other hardwares connected to the mobile, namely hard disk drive, CD or DVD-ROM, USB card reader, FDDD drive, processor, RAM, LAN card, wireless LAN card, USB expansion board, VGA card, and the power supply unit. These are all types of hardware inside the system unit of the personal computer. A motherboard is one of the most essential parts of a computer system. It holds together many of the crucial components of a computer, including the central processing unit or CPU, memory, and connectors for input and output devices. The base of a motherboard consists of a very firm sheet of non-conductive material, typically some sort of rigid plastic. Thin layers of copper or aluminum foil, referred to as traces, are printed onto this sheet. These traces are very narrow and form the circuits between the various components. In addition to circuits, a motherboard contains a number of sockets and slots to connect the other components. Another definition of motherboard, also known as the printed circuit board, it's the foundation of a computer that allocates power and allows communication to and between the CPU, RAM, and all other computer hardware components. There are multiple types of motherboards designed to work with specific types of processors in memory. And almost every major component, such as CPU, memory, expansion slots, and more, that crucial for the functioning of the computer is attached to the motherboard. Let's talk about parts of a motherboard and their function. If you were to open up your computer and take out the board, you would probably get pretty confused about all the different parts. Depending on the make and model of your computer, it might look something like this. To understand how computers work, you don't need to know every single part of the motherboard. However, it is good to know some of the more important parts and how the motherboard connects the various parts of a computer system together. Here are some of the typical parts. The CPU central processing unit is the most important part of your computer. It is called the brain of the computer that is responsible for fetching, decoding, and executing program instructions as well as performing mathematical and logical calculations and the CPU socket is where your CPU or processor is installed. Memory slab. Random access memory, also called computer memory, is another crucial part of the computer. It's volatile that temporarily store dynamic data to enhance computer performance while you are working and it loses its contents once power is turned off. Well, the memory slots are where we insert the RAM. Most motherboards have two to four memory slots, which determine the type of RAM used with the computer. And the most common types of RAM are SDRAM and DDR for desktop computers and SODIMM for laptop computers, each having various types and speeds. 
The BIOS stands for Basic Input or Output System is where all the information and settings for the motherboard are stored and it can be accessed, updated, and modified via the BIOS mode. BIOS is essentially the link between the computer hardware and software in the system. The BIOS is stored on a ROM chip because ROM retains information even when no power is being supplied to the computer and used during the startup routine or boot process to check out the system and prepare to run the hardware. Next, the CMOS battery. Complementary metal oxide semiconductor, also known as CMOS battery, is what's responsible for keeping all the information intact when the entire system is shut down. And all motherboards include a small separate block for CMOS, which are kept alive by a battery known as a CMOS battery, even when the PC's power is off. This prevents reconfiguration when the PC is powered on. Again, the CMOS battery is removable that can be removed to reset the virus after a failed update or if you overclock your RAM beyond its capabilities. The computer cache memory. Cache memory is a small block of high-speed memory or RAM that acts as a buffer between RAM and the CPU. It holds frequently requested data and instructions so that they are immediately available to the processor on demand. Well, most CPU have an internal cache memory built into the processor that is referred to as level 1 or primary cache memory. And this can be supplemented by in external cache memory fitted on the motherboard that is the level 2 or secondary cache. PCA slots or the expansion buses. PCI stands for Peripheral Component Interconnect and expansion bus is an input or output pathway from the CPU to peripheral devices. These are the slots that allow inserting expansion cards such as graphics card, sound card, LAN card, or several other functional computer parts. PCI is the most common expansion bus in a PC and other hardware platforms. Buses carry signals such as data, memory addresses, power, and control signals from component to a component. Other types of buses include ISA and EISA. IDE or SATA. On older motherboards, you found integrated drive electronics or IDE slots. These are the standard interface for connecting a motherboard to storage devices such as hard drives and CD-ROM or DVD drives. But now, the latest motherboards make use of SATA technology. A serial advanced technology attachment, serial ATA, SATA, or SATA, is a computer bus interface used to connect host bus adapters, or disk drive controllers, with mass storage devices like optical drives and hard drives. The computer chipsets. A chipset is a group of small circuits that coordinate the flow of data to and from a PC key components. These key components include the CPU itself, the main memory, the secondary cache, and any devices situated on the buses. A chipset also controls data flow to and from hard disk and other devices connected to the IDE channels. A computer has got two main chipsets, the North Bridge and the South Bridge. The North Bridge, also called the Memory Controller, is in charge of controlling transfers between the processor and the RAM, which is why it is located physically near the processor. It is sometimes called the GMCH, for graphic and memory controller have.
Next is the South Bridge, also called the Input or Output Controller or Expansion Controller. Handles communications between slower peripheral devices such as USB, audio, serial, the system BIOS, the ISA bus, the interrupt controller, and the IDE channels. It is also called the ICH or IO controller hub. The term bridge is generally used to designate a component which connects two buses. How about the input or output ports? These ports are located at the back of the computer and are often color-coded. Microphone, ping 3.5 mm jack port, speakers and headphones or headsets or earbuds, bold green 3.5 mm jack port, monitor, all their motherboards are equipped with a solid blue BGA port at the back, but newer motherboards use the HDMI and black or white DVI port as a standard. Ethernet network cable, colorless port, keyboard and mouse, PS2 port, keyboard, purple, and mouse is per green. USB devices, USB 2.0 colorless port, USB 3.0 or 3.1 solid blue port. Yes, BGA ports are similar color, but this only goes to show how outdated BGA is. And some modern motherboards feature USB C type connection. So these are the input or output ports next the cpu fan a fan located on top of a computer processor it helps to pull and blow hot air off the processor helping keep it cooler and the power supply fan a fan located inside a power supply when you start your computer, you may hear a beep code. These are the audio signals given out by a computer to announce the result of a short diagnostic testing sequence. The computer performs when first powering up or called the power on self-test or POST. When you're power on your computer, it has to test major devices such as RAM, processor, keyboard and drives among others if any of the devices are faulty you will receive a beep sound indicating which device has a problem so that's all for the discussions about the parts and functions of the motherboard thank you for watching and have a nice day